continuing their tradition of innovation and trying new ideas. In the 1990s, Whelan debuted HIDs. The stated benefits of this product were extended bulb life, ruggedness of bulb lacking a filament, and several different claims about lumens or brightness, which didn't really address perceived brightness, but overall they had some numbers to back up that the overall light output was stronger in HID. Um, the downsides would be they require a ballast or power supply. They take a minute to warm up. They are a cooler or bluer shade of light when they're warming up, so they discolor certain colored lights. And overall, it just adds a lot of complexity to something that was relatively simple. So we're going to compare a few similar versions of the Rotabeam with the HID and kind of see how they stack up, at least on video to your eyes. Uh, that's the, quote, normal version or the dual reflector halogen. Um, we can open up the less common dual sealed beam version, which kind of gives us a known benchmark of a perceived brightness. The dual sealed beam beacon in one form or another has been around for a very, very long time. And so that can kind of be our bottom rung benchmark, whatever you want to call it. Um, the HID looks pretty much exactly the same as the dual reflector halogen. It just has the HID bulb and the ballast and the various components that come with uh, needing an HID. Um, I did switch up the order here. So uh, this one on the far right is the HID. You can see the ballasts in, or the ballast in there rather. Um, look at the HID bulb. And here's a look at the standard halogen dual reflector. Um, essentially the same thing, but with no ballast and a halogen bulb. And here is a look at the dual uh, sealed beam version, which is pretty much a dual sealed beam beacon in that package. So the ramp up time on these uh, HID beacons was actually a little bit longer than this. Um, this one had been on recently and warmed up. Um, the color temperature, I think you can see it looked a little green to start and that was because of the blue tint as it warms up going through the amber dome. Um, one of the things you may have noticed initially is the domes are all slightly different shades. That isn't an intentional process of the HID or the halogen or the sealed beam. It's just there was a lot of variation in dome color with Whalen, especially in amber and to a lesser extent in blue. Um, we can compare the um, reflector types, uh, like reflector types, side by side first um, to give an idea. Here's a better warm up uh, sequence for the HID next to its halogen counterpart. Um, as you can see, you pretty much get instant light with the halogen, uh, the HID not so much. It takes several seconds to get to full brightness. Uh, once it's at full brightness, I personally feel the overall uh, perceived brightness is not really significantly better than the halogen. Um, there's a lot of discussion about uh, perceived brightness versus actual candle power, lumens, etc. Um, and there have been several different uh, metrics set for measuring perceived brightness versus scientific light output over the years. So Whelan states that their HID produces 125,000 candle power versus 25,000 candle power in the standard halogen. Uh, they also note that the amp draw is about half, two amps versus four per unit. Um, the bulb life for their HID is listed at 1,500, 1500 hours uh, versus 300 hours for their halogen. Uh, color temperature is 
5,500 degrees Kelvin for the HID and 3,000 degrees Kelvin for a halogen. Um, that's kind of their benchmarks. Um, so what do those benchmarks mean? Well, there's a couple different ways that warning lights get compared. Um, peak candle power is often used and it's probably not the best one to use. Um, it really can't be used to directly compare how the human eye perceives it for a number of factors. Um, so in studies, a lot of times you'll see uh, candle power seconds, um, which is a different method of calculation. Um, and it's a different math problem essentially. And they, it supposedly uh, equates more accurately to your perceived uh, view of something. Then there's also uh, effective candle power, which is a separate math equation um, that is supposedly a even better um, representation of what you would see as brighter. Um, there's a couple others. This gets debated back and forth. Uh, in the day of LEDs now, it's kind of a moot point considering if anything LEDs may have gotten too bright. Um, so when you take those stats and compare them and then weigh that against the increased amount of garbage or parts in the HID versions of these lights and the warm-up time, um, you're really not even getting a light that significantly blows the sealed beam out of the water. Um, here I actually threw in Code 3's sealed beam replacement light, which is two XL5000 uh, reflectors thrown in a beacon just to kind of compare it and give an idea. Um, I guess really what I'm trying to show here is there's not a lot of perceived brightness difference between these commercially available lights. And while you might have gotten a little bit longer bulb life out of the HID, um, that may have really been about it. Uh, and the drawbacks probably outweighed it. And as you saw, uh, they did discontinue their HID products about four years after they debuted them, and they actually had kits for rolling them back. So at this point, we're into some slow motion footage, which, um, judging by my YouTube stats, a lot of people don't bother watching, which is fine. I would call your attention in this case to the uh, light patterns that each beacon makes on the backdrop, uh, and kind of the shape and whether they're filled in solid hollow and just how that's a little bit different um, that's really all that i found to be significantly different um, perceived from different angles um, in my opinion i did not see a really significant difference even between the uh, sealed beam light and the modern halogen bulb version so you can judge for yourself from this video, but videos aren't always 100% accurate as uh, judging brightness. I will say that I think the video holds up pretty well to my in-person experience. But again, you can be the judge. Uh, as far as wheel and HID product out there, there's not many left in the field. Um, if any, uh, they show up as what I would call collectibles now and then. Uh, and that's why I had to grab this one up. Um, I would love to get my hands on the Advantage Light Bar version. Um, I have not seen one of those in person in a very, very long time. So anyway, if you want to enjoy the slow motion footage, uh, please feel free to do so. Otherwise, I hope this has been an informative and interesting look at the brief run of HID in the uh, emergency warning market by Willen Engineering.